So I was actually really wondering how to kick off this video, but I actually watched a video that was um, very um, interesting that got me thinking for a couple days until I could finally come to a conclusion on what I wanted to talk about. Basically, there's this girl in her late 20s that was diagnosed with a mental illness, and um, this uh, therapist was basically criticizing his own uh, industry because another therapist that was tasked with treating this woman uh, said that, you know, I can't help you, so no one else can. So the woman lost all hope and scheduled her own self-deletion. And everything that this, uh, that this therapist uh, was talking about, I actually agree with how, like, some therapists are just kind of narcissistic, I guess you could say. Obviously, I say some because this therapist, who you could tell had a good heart and wanted to get into the field for helping people, saw what was wrong. And I myself have uh, had an interesting um, experience with a lot of therapists, how a lot of them were clearly not listening or clearly not understanding what it was I was trying to say to them and I think it might just maybe it's not even mal maliciousness or narcissism but the one thing I've realized about a lot of therapists is they really don't listen to what it is you're trying to tell them so they can treat you because you know if I, I'm not a therapist but if I could put myself in a therapist's shoes right the only way I'd be able to really help someone and this is without being a therapist too is to understand where it is that they truly are in life like actually understand what's going on and obviously there are such thing as lying clients right but i actually kind of got disillusioned with therapy because of these reasons where i would try to talk to these therapists and um it kind of just seemed like they were so emotionally unintelligent that I was just wondering why am I even spending my money on therapy and why am I even wasting my time when I know what my issues were. And a lot of my personal problems actually got fixed when I stopped listening to the voice that says I'm never going to do anything with my life and actually try to do things with my life, found purpose, found um, you know, sorting through a lot of the different fields in life before I finally found things that worked for me. But that was like back in the day. Like, I'm gonna be honest, like even then it was pretty bad, but now it's like almost like a lot of these therapists are now saying even more crazy things to the people that they're supposed to be helping. And I really see the mental health industry taking an even deeper turn for the worse. I mean, sometimes I even feel bad for people who are hooked on medications and are dependent on these things. And I'm not saying that there's no such thing as people who have disorders who need to take these medications like antipsychotics or anything like that. Because there are cases where some people really do have problems and they do need to take medications so they can get their minds right or they can organize their thoughts. But I think they're also very quick to diagnose people just so they can sell them on these medications you know i think sometimes some therapists actually try to nitpick and find or diagnose something wrong with something especially to little kids like how many times do you see little kids who are just super creative and high energy get diagnosed with adhd so they give them these medications to these developing brains that probably hurts them in the long run like, we've kind of forgotten that a lot of kids go through phases, and, you know, where Gen X had the boomers raising them, and they were the, you stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about, like, intimidation was the thing that whipped them into shape. Now we have, like, the Gen Xers raising, like, the millennials and Gen Zers, and now it's like the, here, let's medicate your problems away just so you'll stay silent. And that's why I say it's, like, really hard to actually authentically help someone unless you could actually understand in their first person view what it is exactly that they are going through and i think that's going to get a little bit harder just because i've met some people and dealt with certain therapists last time i saw a therapist was actually in 2020 and um, i got actually two stories to share with you and you know they might actually be nitpicking i'm not saying that all psychologists are like this but it just brings to light that there's psychologists out there like that and it's just kind of a luck of the draw to someone who might be seriously mentally unhealthy getting treated by one of these misguided therapists so back in 2020 i actually was with a therapist and this was the last time i um i was with a therapist right um and it was interesting because i was at an all-time low point i was uh um injured i was trying to get my life back together like my whole 
mental state just kind of seemed out of sorts. And that's a lot of because of like my upbringing and lack of guidance. And um, I was just very lost and confused and everything like that. So I came into the therapist's office and you have this person putting on a facade like they have all these degrees and they have all this knowledge and they're the golden ones that are there to help you. And you tell them what's on your mind and it just kind of seems like she was lost and didn't even know how to help me out. And it was almost like she was just saying, it just kind of seems like you think the world's becoming less safe of a place. And, you know, we're talking about 2020 here. Of course, the, le the world became way less safe of a place back in 2020, right? Like, I don't think you need to be very smart to figure that one out, that the world has become a way more dangerous place than 2020. And it kind of just seemed like I understood that it doesn't seem like, you know, I'm not, I told her that I, it seems like you're trying to control how I'm reacting to things that are going on outside. It doesn't seem like you actually want to get me to help. Your just ultimate goal is just to get me to stay silent so you could credit yourself as being, you know, more competent than you really are. And I just kind of like, honestly, that was like the moment where I kind of like snapped into perspective that, yeah, no, like a lot of these therapists are just trying to talk out these issues when a lot of them have the issues themselves. And I remember I saw an inside of the therapist office in 2020 and early 2021 and just how overwhelmed they all kind of seemed to be like they had made a mistake getting into that field and i was just a guy who was kind of on top of all the you know misguidedness i had overcome i was very worried for my family's future my future at the time and it just kind of seemed like the last ditch effort like i remember this this very same therapist basically said that I think I should give up on you like right then because it wasn't going to be an easy cakewalk it's not and I wasn't going to quote-unquote cooperate when I already knew what was wrong with me you know I, I I think I already knew from the very beginning and I knew what I had to do to fix it and I knew what I had to become to become something you know but of course she wanted to give up and I had a and she was trying to recommend me to being a therapist to like another therapist like one that was a specialist and I remember she like dramatically said I'm very very sick and I remember like the sick she said it like this sick <sighs> like that you know it's like she was trying to like emphasize it and I remember what happened after that is you know it I remember we got in a conversation about something else after that right and she basically said that she apologized because she was just willing to give up and everything like that. And, you know, it was funny because after she said that, oh, now I can use this to make myself a better therapist, I was actually very relieved and I thought that I could move forward with the right therapist. But long behold, a week later, she is moving to a different state and she's finally getting her dream house with her husband and all that stuff and she's living the dream and then she leaves all like of her clients behind and has to refer them to other people. Like she put on that I'm here to help you facade so much and then she moved on and she kind of left a lot of clients hanging. I mean, of course, people get new jobs all the time and people move on up all the time. But I think the fact that like I saw the facade break and she was just so excited for herself and not wondering what was going to happen to any of her clients and just kind of was so quick to move on that it kind of made me think that, man, all these therapists really are just people like the rest of us taking on a job and this career. And I said, but is like this career really worth it if these therapists don't even have these superpowers? And it, and it also kind of ties into... The next example I had, and this was a little bit shorter, but sometimes I've seen people who get these psychology degrees who really just have to give everybody outside of the office a lecture. And this is way after I was done with therapy and I had moved on and I had started working with my hands and I was working for this cabinetry business where I was actually building cabinets uh, with wood and stuff. So like building things with my hands became very um beneficial and we had this one lady who worked at the front desk who like was bragging about her psychology degree and everything like that but the way she went about it was like this narcissistic self-righteous no this is what you're really thinking because subconsciously this 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 and she'd go on like a, a, a 15 minute explanation of mental gymnastics and psychoanalysis that no this is the way you're really thinking because this is what you really are and i know this because i have said piece of paper like I remember I was talking about like, you know, you know, something that wasn't even therapy related and she just busts out a whiteboard and actually draws it like I, I, I literally, you know, am not joking. She literally just draws a whole brain diagram on the thing and just tries to get me to 
get this psychoanalysis of myself on like understanding me because apparently because she got this piece of paper she knows me way more than i know myself like i think it was all like ego driven and she just wanted to prove to the world how intelligent and smart and deep she was and she almost did it to like everybody too like i think a lot of us were kind of like catching on to it and I think that the thing was is that I realized I was kind of relieved at the point because I wasn't doing therapy anymore because I was like thinking, you know, man, if they have people like that entering the therapy industry and just those are the people who are in charge of helping people, think of all the invalidation someone who's probably already traumatized is about to go through and is about to feel worse or at least go down a more self-blaming uh, route in life because of someone like that who just wants to be the doctor that everybody worships, not because they actually care about helping people and i think this circles back to the beginning point of like the video that inspired this you get some good doctors out there that are really given a bad rap because of careless doctors like this or doctors who are doing this for all the wrong reasons because they want to be known as like some deep psychoanalysis thinker or they want to be the master of molding people's brains and everything it just kind of got me very disillusioned with therapy and then seeing videos like this and how it's getting even worse it kind of gets me to be very worried for anyone who trusts the advertisements that you should go to the mental health industry uh, with the current things because a lot of people are frustrated nowadays even more so than ever because they're having natural human responses to the conditions of our world and i'm not saying that there's not people who are mentally ill or have some sort of pre-diagnosed or misdiagnosed condition that's underlying Th those exist but i think the fact of the matter is is that mental health overall whether you have a disorder or not is going down the drain and when you see that it's because of outside factors more stress financial insecurities um a lot of stress a lot of people signed on for a normal life and never expected what we're getting now like the postmodern world of narcissism you know lack of loyalty between friends bad friendships bad relationships just overall 90 percent of people who are just kind of like absolutely twisted but you mix that with people who are probably high stress because of this society we live in. And then they go to therapists like that and then they're going to be told by these people, oh, I don't know what to tell you because I don't know what to tell you because I'm the therapist that everyone needs to listen to. No one else is ever going to. You're going to have a lot of people who lack any sort of counseling, venting, and it just makes for adding a gasoline to the fire that is mental health. 10 times worse so i think the overall point of this video is seeing stuff like this and seeing how the therapy industry has kind of evolved and everything like that um you know i'm not saying don't go but every year it kind of seems like it's about to get worse with worse results and just with people who get into the industry because they want to feed their egos instead of actually help people you know get their minds right so they could live healthy normal lives it just kind of seems like it's a it's a bad deal so I, what i'd say is pick your doctors wisely don't be so quick to point the finger at yourselves and blame yourselves or think that there's something wrong with your way of thinking because you know sometimes there is but sometimes there isn't i think that's the problem it's hard to tell nowadays with all the bad therapists that are out there and all the narcissistic therapists that are out there and i'm not really a let registered therapist myself because i don't claim to be someone who has all the answers this is just me giving my thoughts and opinions based on my life experiences in the therapy realm but i think the number one thing is before you walk through that door and sign up at the front desk or try to check yourself into a psych ward ward look outward around at the groups of people that you are hanging around are you around bad friends are you in abusive relationships are you in you know relationships with people who want to cut you down gaslight you etc and that could be a battle itself because with everybody having their own narratives in their mind where they're the main character it makes it 10 times harder to grip reality because it almost seems like everyone wants to serve themselves instead of be part of a community and it could be uh, even bigger like like sheet of fog to the already blurry lines that is you know this world but um i think that's what i got to say about this i really wanted to talk about this and make a video but hope you enjoyed it if you want to give your thoughts about the therapy industry or if you're disillusioned yourself with it or you have any other concerns or anything um, i'd love to hear it in the comments but i'll uh, see you guys later take care